Welcome. Today, we're actually going to do something a bit different. We've been talking at CircuitBread for a while of how we want to do a bit more practical stuff. So originally, we were talking to EBM Pabst and Sager Electronics about this, their Diaforce fan, and we wanted to do a stress test of the fan. We'd seen the marketing material and thought it was cool, but honestly, we just thought it was a bit of marketing fluff in the way it was super powerful and all that sort of stuff. And so we thought, hey, let's just do some stress tests on it, see if it lives up to the hype, see if it does what it says it's going to do. And when I got it, it was so much more interesting and more powerful than I was expecting. Uh, honestly, our video team, when I showed them, our video team lead thought that it was for propulsion in like large model electric airplanes. So before we do the stress test, we wanted to talk about this and see kind of what you'll be dealing with in the real world as an electrical engineer in terms of fans and cooling and all that sort of stuff. So there's a lot of different fans out there for different applications, but this one specifically is for server cooling. So moving large amounts of air as quietly, reliably, and efficiently as possible. Kind of a cool thing as we were looking into this, there's this Swiss student car that was trying to go from zero to 60 or zero to 100 miles an hour as fast as possible. And they use this to keep their car on the ground, created a suction to pull the car on the ground. So this fan, it was actually custom designed uh, when a large server company wanted a specific requirement. So they went to EBM Pabst and said, hey, we need something that has 50% more air performance and six decibels less noise than the best competitor product currently on the market. And it is designed to be a lower noise, higher efficiency replacement for any counter rotating fans, but it can be used in any high back pressure application where low noise and high airflow are requirements. With that little bit of background, let's talk about the fan itself and some of the things that when you're looking at a fan, you should be paying attention to. So you have the more basic things, like you have your basic structure on the outside, you have your moving parts on the inside. And frankly, we haven't turned it on yet, but I have turned it on and just having my fingers in that area is kind of scary because this gets very, very fast and puts out a lot of air. On this, you have your air intake and it gets sucked in, and then you have the air coming out on this side. Specifically, they made it so the input was smaller, and then on the output, they have these static curved veins. So it looks kind of like on our typical fan, you have those blades, but these are actually stuck in place. And the way it's designed is so the air moves in through it linearly, straight through, and then also radially by spinning around, uh, which is supposed to increase the overall air pressure. Now you do notice on this one that the air goes in through like this. You'll see other fans that'll come in and that'll be shot off to the side. Um, and you'll see just other different ways. And there's pros and cons of everything. The attempt with this was to have the best of both worlds in terms of getting as much pressure and volume at the same time. Now for a fan this size, you may be surprised to find out this is actually a 450 watt fan. So you need 48 volts to drive it at 450 watts. That's nearly 10 amps. I have my dedicated bench top supply, but this can't supply 48 volts at 450 watts. I'm just using this to control the speed on it. I have a dedicated 48 volt power supply that actually provides the power of the spinning. So that's something that you should think of is 450 watts is pretty significant. When you hear this go, you'll realize that's actually very reasonable, but whenever you're doing your design, you need to think about, okay, 48 volts, 450 watts, how am I gonna run this? Also with this one, it's pretty loud uh, because it sounds like a jet plane. And even though it is quieter, a lot of other fans of this size and this airflow, it is still on the louder sides. Whenever I watch a movie and I see like a server room or an airplane and then the characters are talking to each other like this, you know, really something like, have you ever been on an airplane? They're really loud. You have to speak very loudly and server rooms are the exact same. So they have a loud, consistent rumble and that's kind of a, what you'd expect with this fan. So these are around 91 plus decibels at their optimum operating point. So I can control the speed by turning up my power supply from zero to 10 volts. I, I put the two grounds together so they have a shared ground. And then on the input line, when I give it 10 volts, it'll be at 100% speed, which in this case is 17,200 RPM or almost 300 rotations per second. And at full speed, that's 286 rotations per second. Now, I looked on Wikipedia because I was curious about this. A typical blink lasts about 100 to 150 milliseconds. So with a quick blink, this fan spins almost 29 times. So let's turn this on and I will ease it up. And then at around 60 to 70 percent, that's when this thing starts sliding around. So we'll see how brave I am. I might or might not catch it before it starts sliding off the desk. 
All right. Okay, we're currently at about 40%. So I'm gonna crank that up. Now we're about 75%. There we are. And right now it's blowing the, the lights and everything quite a bit. Let's get this up to 100%. So that's it at 100%. It is rotating at 17,200 RPM right now. And it's blowing things in the room all over the place. So let me turn this down a little bit. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit so we can talk about the airflow. Okay. So anybody that has ridden in an airplane is probably familiar with that sound and can probably make that association with, wow, that sounds a lot like a jet engine. It also started to slide a little bit before I held it down, but uh, fortunately I'm okay. I'm sweating just a little bit. Not, It's blowing out that way though. So papers over there were flying all over the place and this light, the, the thing that covers it's flapping in the wind. It's kind of funny to watch, but uh, this can move around 600 cubic feet per minute. So and that's in CFM. And so this room is actually fairly small. It's about 2,500 to 2,700 cubic feet, roughly. So this moves the equivalent of this entire room's air every seven minutes or so. And thinking about it, the largest server racks I could find are around 200 cubic feet, which would be about two complete air exchanges twice a minute. And frankly, most server racks are quite a bit smaller than that. Now, now, admittedly, my calculations assume kind of free airflow uh, instead of being in a tight space and dealing with pressure. Uh, so that's not going to be exactly correct, but it gives you a rough idea of how much air is moving. So now that I've kind of shown what this does and how fast that air and the spinning can go, let's talk a little bit about how it can be operated because that's really what's important to us as engineers. It's like, what are we dealing with here? Now on this one, the speed can be controlled multiple ways. I'm using the zero to 10 volt control with my power supply and them using a common ground, but it can also be controlled with a PWM signal with the duty cycle being mirrored by the speed percentage. So you have a 20% duty cycle and then you get 20% of the speed, so which if you have seen our PWM uh, lessons, you'll realize that there's probably a relationship there between the zero to 10 volts and the PWM signal. But anyway, We'll let you look into that more. Uh, finally, I am not using it, but there's actually a wire here so that you can set up a tachometer. So you can actually get direct feedback on the exact speed of the rotation. Whereas up to this point, I've just been using zero to 100% and kind of figuring out which ones, which based on you know 50% of 17,200 is a number that I'm not gonna calculate in my head, but half. So EBM PAP's Diaforce fan is not your typical axial fan that you'll use in small hobbyist projects or anything like that. I mean, even the name denotes that it's a combination between a diagonal and an axial fan with the name Diaforce. It is a serious and seriously powerful fan in a small package designed specifically for server cooling and other things that have a lot of back pressure and stuff like that. But that's not gonna stop us from putting it to the test with our stress test and doing fun things outside of its normal usage case. So. When we post that video, please look out for it. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. As it is, I hope you enjoyed this first foray into a little bit more practical, hands-on experimentation of some of the products that are out there that you may run into. And you can have some comparison between this and other fans and know what to expect when you're using them. If you did find this video useful, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and we will catch you in the next one. Take care. We hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Did you know that circuitbread.com has other useful engineering content? In addition to many other features, we have study guides that cover a wide variety of engineering topics at a high level, with equations and diagrams to make it easy to quickly review and reference. Go check them out!